I recently went to fold. I haven't been back there in a very, very long time. I think the last time, or long time for me anyway, maybe for you guys, being to raves is something that you do kind of like here and there. There's never something that's that serious. But for me, the last time I went to fold was maybe around September time, probably for transmissions when they booked DVS1 and Rene Wise back to back, like legitimately one of the best. No, not back to back, sorry. DVS1 and Rene Wise as a whole lineup. And if I'm not mistaken, it actually worked the other way around. Instead of actually DVS1 ending it, DVS1 started and Renault Wise was the one that ended it so it was a pretty sick way to put the show together I'm not going to lie um, so when you walked in you're just hearing Ren, you know, DVS1 going absolutely crazy allegedly I heard from people that were in there that Renee Wise was on the dance floor going mad and then he went on, a, on behind the decks and performed I was like that's what you live for so big up transmissions for always kind of booking um cool and interesting people and then you know putting them in you know in different environments and also just having a good idea on how to program these nights really well because if that was me and i was booking it, i would just put you know devious one to end but switching them around was really cool and kind of added to the energy there like people were like shocked oh shit walking in especially like i did it and like whenever it was i think 12 and thinking shit devious one's playing you're like fucking hell absolutely surprising so that was absolutely great so last time what was september um, I was meant to go to an or unfold but I keep missing them I think you know psychologically in my head I've still got this idea that Sundays are meant for rest unless I'm going to like Berlin to go to Bergheim or something I don't really see Sundays as a time to rave although unfold is a pretty decent and unique kind of presentation of Sunday raving because they start at 12 p.m if I'm not mistaken and it ends at 12 a.m so you get all those hours of raving and you still get to go home at a reasonable hour to go to work technically on a Monday but you know everyone that's going to unfold doesn't work a regular job they're all being creatives and doing cool fun things here i am slogging away doing regular work on construction sites and climbing up scaffolding like i'm spider-man i'm joking but you know what i mean so i went to see um went to fold i went for this night which was the um fold presents freddie k all night extended a pretty unique one because it went a bit longer than what fold nights usually go around you fold nights usually end at six but this one ended at seven started at 11 so you know freddie k playing all night and if you know anything about freddie k and his legendary sets at berghain he's end he's you know his closing sets and just generally him as a dj he does prefer to play really long extended sets to the point where if i'm not mistaken he got into a bit of a kerfuffle if i'm not mistaken i don't know what exactly Exactly it was what rave it was but it's something to do with Berghain where he was meant to play he meant to play like an ending set the set got ended so yeah I think it was when Berghain reopened Berghain barely reopened and I guess for whatever reason the times have changed anyway they never come back to normal I think if I'm not mistaken Berghain used to end really late on a Monday like maybe 1 p.m or something crazy like that so it got it'll be open from basically Saturday all the way to Monday non-stop until like 1 p.m Monday and for whatever reason after the pandemic maybe it's just I've heard several stories that it's a staff shortage I've heard other stories that because the other guy moved out or left the business now they've kind of changed the working hours but regardless it's not as a longer set anymore to close so freddie k got annoyed by that and then he went after he finished his burger and said he kind of promoted the fact that he was playing i think at kit kat bar or somewhere else um as an after party and for whatever reason maybe the way he did it what he said in a tweet or something again rumors from people on the online who knows what's true something happened where you know he kind of fell out with people in burkheim in terms of booking or maybe he went on strike i don't know but it led to him maybe not doing too many closings now he's kind of back you know in line with stuff and he's there again doing great things so big up him but in general he's always known for doing really good extended quote-unquote um sets right playing for hours and hours and hours and end he's basically in some extent this is a bad analogy but bear with me he's basically our underground version of solomon now there, there was a time where solomon was underground like don't forget that one but Freddie K is probably our kind of closest reputation representation to it and obviously he's somebody that's very much of a music lover um he's got um an, an amazing actually I think really good radio show that I think he still does at the moment on SoundCloud I remember he was doing it a bit for a bit on Hoare that online radio station in Berlin um I think that's how you pronounce it right Hoare if I'm, if I'm not pronouncing it right but um now of course you know just traveling the world doing his thing so i think you can see him perform live because i've legitimately i don't think i've actually seen him play live oddly enough regardless of the amount of times that i've been out often to these parties that i think he would you know probably play at or i've been to places like berlin and gone to places like Berghain and stuff i actually haven't seen him play i think the one time i was meant to see him play i was meant to go to that club in georgia is it uh 
Basayani, however you pronounce that word, sorry if I'm pronouncing wrong, but I think I was meant to see him there once before, but you know, I kind of chickened out in terms of going to Georgia because I was a bit scared and whatnot, but I'm still going to end up going. Anyway, regardless, Fold was amazing. So first things first, Fold's not too far from me, so it's like a 20 minute bike ride, you know, so that was pretty good. And obviously I grew up in the area, so I know the area pretty well. So it kind of, you know, I had to basically get myself ready to go pretty late because I kind of finished work late. And also I had to go early enough to make sure I catch the flipping 24 hour off license which is not 24 hour anymore because of annoying neighbors that are being antisocial and basically causing police to come around then i have to close at like 2 45 so before you know whatever so i had to kind of leave before then which was pretty decent because i left about one ish and then obviously a quick ride over there 20 minute ride on a bike which is i feel like the best way to arrive at a club you get a little sweat on you get some you know some nice fresh air through your nostrils and out through your mouth and you're just kind of ready to kind of go and i think when i stepped in that's what adrenaline i had from riding the bike carried me through for the next two to three hours before I even had bought my first drink so I think that really helped and kind of helped me to pace the night but the one thing that I forgot about fold is how hot and humid it is in there oh my god it's even more wet and hot and humid than it's ever been in the past I'm not too sure if they're just giving up on the air conditioning I'm not too sure if the air conditioning is kind of kind of on a little bit I'm not sure if there's a, a tactic that they use as in terms of like you know if you're trying to create a space for people to dance and rave in, you basically have to be attuned to all these little tiny things where you place your doors, the lighting, the bar, um, the space between the, the stage, quote unquote, and the, you know, and the dance floor. Like all these things kind of play into how you kind of, you know, construct a space to make it uh, raveable, to make it an enjoyable space. And I wouldn't be surprised if part of that reasoning was to maybe kind of turn off the air conditioning a little bit and let people just sweat it out on the dance floor. Because I remember back in the day, Plastic Peoples, one of the best clubs in London ever, right? In the history of clubs back in the day. And this was around what, Cur is it Curtain Road in Shoreditchy type of area? An amazing place, right? Maybe the music was a little bit, you know, one note, but in general, just as a vibe and everything, so cool because it was like a little cramped, really small basement bar where you the dj was on the same level as you in terms of booth wise you could just literally touch over and touch the flipping turntable if you wanted to some people did do that sort of stuff and obviously got in big trouble but overall it's a splendid 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 spot and that a lot of the beauty of that space was because of how small it was so i'm wondering if over time you know folk just realized like in terms of a vibe some nights when it gets really loud and larry because a lot of people that follow freddie k are what i'll describe as club kids right we don't have many of them in london but they are definitely the club kids that you described they're like loads of the queer gay scene guys who are out there in full force really letting their presence be known which i'm going to touch upon later but they definitely were there in force so i definitely might add it to it loads of tops off anyway so why not just turn the air conditioning off or put it really low so that the flipping heat of everybody in there slipping just sticking off the walls and it's really 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 popping off there and i really really bloody enjoyed that one i'm not going to lie in the slightest so that was absolutely amazing and very much enjoyable and then another thing i quick have to know if you haven't been there yet in a long time because i haven't since september of course they've moved where the cloakroom person is so sorry the, well, the, the locker person is so usually when you walk into fold um obviously you get searched at the place and you get you go to a ticket stand thing you have to hand over your id to one person take a picture on the camera or every single time to take a picture it's absolutely annoying but whatever it is you get your ticket scanned you walk up the stairs and as you open the main set of doors there's usually somebody sat on the desk there where you can kind of you get your padlock and it's usually a girl or something or anybody who can, who cares and the padlock system works as usual you know standard the vibe i think it's a five pound fee ten pound deposit and then um you get your locker and then you can basically get your shit in there one thing that's changed actually interesting enough if i'm not mistaken maybe i wasn't paying attention but they've numbered the pad they've numbered the padlocks and the and the lockers so whatever padlock you get it's got for the corresponding pad it's for the corresponding um locker sorry i'm not sure if it was like that all the time but i, I kind of remember that this time maybe because i was sober so that maybe is a reason why but that's to be the case and then the other case i was going to say oh yeah and the table itself where you go get it done is at the back of the club now so it's not at the front where you kind of walk in it's now basically behind the dj booth kind of if you kind of go in a club you know what i mean there's a kind of room you kind of go into where there's more lockers and there's usually a toilet behind there and sometimes if you're if you are vip you can go back into the kind of the green room sort of space in there too but there is basically where the person you're meant to go get a locker from so that's a kind of a bit of a change which is a bit of annoying because it means you have to kind of you know go through the club with your coat and jacket on or maybe hold it in your hand and kind of clumsily try and walk past people to get your locker but hey what can you do um apart from that the music itself was phenomenal 
hearing Freddie K do his thing for like three, no, four hours or plus hours in there was really special, especially in that space. Like, I have a big thing about seeing those type of DJs in their actual space that they're known for. Like, you know, seeing a Freddie K closing Berghain is really important if you need to kind of get an idea of what he's actually like as a DJ because a lot of his kind of mystique and aura and legend has been kind of made from that place. But it's also quite nice when you get someone like that playing in one of the best clubs that we have here in London because you also get, I feel like, a better representation of what he's actually like as opposed to if you play like in an E1 because E1 is a bit more, I guess, in my opinion, in my head anyway, I don't feel it's just true, but in E1's a bit more of a commercial, normie, general crowd, whereas Fold is a bit more core, sceny, quote unquote underground y type people that go there. Um, or people that would want to be known as club kids or whatnot go there, right? So that I guess is a bit more a bit more of a better representation of what it's gonna be like because I feel like the DJs definitely can can see the difference. Cause someone like Freddie K tours all over the world. He's probably toured all over England. So he knows the difference between going to like a commercial club that's also into him and going to a club like Fold and seeing people that he would maybe see reflected in places like Berlin or other cool cities around the Europe and actually kind of getting to know them and whatnot and playing up to them so that was brilliant also seeing him marvel seeing seeing him flip and display all these talents mixing wise in terms of playing an all vinyl set because i know he plays all vinyl anyway but just reminding him playing all vinyl in that sweat box of fold knowing what heat does to records in terms of warping and skipping and him not missing a beat there were some ropey mixes here and there but not ropey like he was letting the elements get to him, just ropey in terms of you know it's just vinyl isn't it? it is what it is part of the joy of listening to somebody play a vinyl set is hearing them work it out in real time whereas you know some people would say cdjs are too perfect in terms of like there's no really way to fuck it as long as you know how to beat match it's really impossible to kind of fuck up a mix on a cdj really to be honest unless you're really don't have a good ear for a blend or anything it's kind of hard to fuck it up well as on a vinyl it's kind of really easy to fuck it up because just uh getting you know matching beat matching is obviously hard because there's no visual bpm match or anything it's just difficult to do overall so the fact that he was doing it and figuring out on the fly was beautiful to see um and just the darkness of it all you forget how good well it like for everything in there is really done at a high level we've got to we have to kind of give the guys credit over there the lighting guys take it seriously um had us linked with the music and stuff and the guy there going crazy and the flipping um what to call it the lighting box set up towards the back there really taking his job seriously that kind of added to the mood it would go black for a minute then these spotlights would come out they'll blew out of nowhere then there'll be loads of smoke oh yeah that's what i did also i came in got my stuff locked in went straight to the front and um, spent about an hour and a half in there in the front just standing there really like an absolute you know bouncer probably looking like a bouncer or whatnot and just soaking it all in and seeing him play up, up front and close and personal was awesome and also seeing that everybody in the front was going absolutely nuts that's what I love about Fold. Doesn't matter who's playing, if it's people at the back, people at the bar, people standing next to the toilets, people even sitting down in a little sitting area, you know, on the other side. People are just like tapping their feet, dancing. It's a real place for people that actually love to like, you know, dance, sweat, and get funky. But it was interesting to see, I'm not gonna lie, it was interesting to see um what I would describe as like chatty type gays. Interesting. Really like because I I I see a lot of people talk about that kind of personality or that kind of crew of people um within like Berghain you know uh dance what yeah Berghain kind of night reports there's a few of them on certain reddits right, where people basically speak about reviews on certain kind of you know um lineups or whatnot at Berghain and you hear a lot of people speak about that kind of aggro um you know bar walking past you and barging you never saying excuse me type of gay and they got a lot of them appeared for the flipping watching his face for the freddie k all nighter and this makes sense though because they're most of my club kids as well but you do get the sense that when certain people play in certain spaces there's definitely a lot more ownership you feel like that crowd of people which you describe as i don't know lgbt um queer or just gay in general they take a lot more ownership like this is my night this is our night this is made for us he represents us bloody blah 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 and there's a lot of kind of like that kind of owning the space and taking it all up in that sort of way and kind of making it be known that this is our party you're kind of the guest which you know is kind of here and there but i just find it interesting that that's a thing because if anything it's a mirror of the thing that that same group would hate in tech house 
in tech house there's definitely that crew of guys that are in a party or even gals sometime that really take up space and let it be known that you are at their event like they've been at these tech house rates for time they followed said you know richie ahmed or michael bibby they followed they follow these guys all over europe and this is what they do they come out on the weekend you know they work all week and they go hard in the, in, on the weekend and then they do it again um you know another week so it's like it's funny you see the same mirrored sort of thing happening there but that aside and me having a couple of you know embarrassing <laughs> cringe exchanges you know, one thing i have to definitely not do especially if i know some of these people from instagram because a lot of these people from instagram you know you know them they're cool because they're you know you just follow them because they're cool basically especially club kids but they're not really people that you should be talking to unless you know them unless you're your friend so me kind of reaching out to say hi to somebody who i know from instagram and touching them on the shoulder to say like get their attention and say hi and then them turning to me and just looking at me like i'm you know gum on the bottom of their shoe and then kind of saying hi like uh, hi in you know, like a really kind of uninfused way it kind of broke my spirit i'm not gonna lie i broke it broke my spirit i was like oh my god this is so embarrassing i feel i feel like so tiny it kind of reminded me of this one time when i went berkheim i think it was like maybe last year or something um and yeah i think it must have been last year for the club sylvester that happened in like june and you know pablo bozzi was you know playing in the trip triple x room just absolutely shelling and i must have been there just dancing having a good time and i got, kind of you know got friendly with this group of gay guys whatnot I said something. I try to be funny or do something. You know me, innit? I try to be flipping funny and be the flipping, you know, the life of the party and whatnot. And this gig, I just said something like, oh, that's cute. Like, in like a mocking way. And he was way shorter than I was, but he made me feel even shorter. He made me feel shorter than Joe Rogan. Like, that level of short. Like, five two, five one short. And this guy must have been like five eight, five seven at least, and I'm six foot. So he made me feel shorter than Joe Rogan. So imagine, he reduced me just by saying, oh, that's cute. I was like, oh my God. Like, I don't know what it is <laughs> about gay guys. Like, I really want to be their friends. I really want to, you know, I obviously take part in what you define as their culture in some regards when it comes to, um, you know, certain types of, you know, dance music and clubs and whatnot. Um, I think a good ally. I think, I, you know, I, I kind of respect the spaces and do my thing and kind of go home. But for some reason, they do not like more in the slightest. <laughs> and I try my best to kind of make it work, but it just doesn't work. But anyway, what could you do in it? But big up Freddie K regardless um some of the some of the people that were taking up the space and kind of you know making their presence known can be seen in this picture here but we'll name no names but still i thought they did add to the absolute vibe of the entire place this extended family of people at flipping fold and number another thing to actually mention also this sign because again i haven't been in a long time i don't know why but i always thought this sign was like some nft augmented reality thing i didn't know it was like a real sign they put on the outside it's absolutely amazing the sign they put on the outside of the fold so big up them and you know for some reason i always for i don't know maybe it's because of the, how it looks it just always reminds me of grease muller um the old grease muller uh, fold whenever i look at it. maybe that's why I, I love the place so much because you know i've got so many happy memories of going grease muller and kind of getting my first sort of maybe introduction to the taste of dance music overall from that club but yeah big up everybody's picture because i feel like they generally added to the vibe but also you know I would assume, I can understand if you're somebody fresh to the scene and didn't know none of these people from the internet, how you'd be a little bit intimidated and feel a little bit kind of weirded out that they're taking up a lot of space and kind of dominating everything around you. But again, it's their thing. So that's to be expected. And that's, of course, Monsieur Freddie K. And of course, one of the owners there, Fold as well, doing their thing outside. But yeah, he absolutely smashed it. All vinyl set on there, absolutely destroyed shelling. Um, the mixing style was absolutely impeccable also. Um, there were so many things that kind of reminded me of like, old grime djs the way he was sort of like you know tapping you know tunes in channel switching um taking away the bass here and there really building up flipping big drops and whatnot just really technical kind of way of playing and if anything he would also be a very good a very good person to go back to back with maybe dvs1 i know maybe those guys don't do back to back too often or maybe just be on the same lineup like you know in terms of one after the other i think they would really marry up really well um dvs1 and flipping freddie k they would do really really good together so big up them all to all, all in all and of course i did mention the thing about the flipping um stage of course there in terms of the logo so that was pretty cool to see and overall i really had a good time about it and i think i've actually got a couple of audio clips i'm going to post so please bear in mind for that as well if you want to see those i've got some audio 
your pod audio clips sorry from the night that i'm going to be posting um so you can definitely get an idea of what it kind of sounds like because obviously this club is one of the clubs in london that we have does have a no photos policy which is obviously great and adds to the law but sometimes you want to hear sound and kind of hear what you kind of missed out on in terms of um the music -y. definitely um i'll add those in on the post so you definitely hear those coming up if you haven't already you definitely hear those coming up right now <laughs> Let's just go. Let's just go. Let's just go. 